contribute to the discussion, but you don't want to be recorded, that's all fine. And you can also type down uh, your uh, question and we will read it out. Um, today's talk has the title Wikibase and the challenges and possibilities of knowledge graphs for RDM and NFDI for culture. And uh, we will have four speakers today. Um, our first speaker is Ina Blümel, who is a professor at Hanover University of Applied Sciences and Arts for the subject Linked Data in Information Science. And she is also deputy head of the um, Open Science Lab at TEB and a co-spokesperson -sp for NFDI for Culture Task Area, Data Capture and Enrichment. Um, our second speaker is Lozana Rosenova, who is a postdoc at TB's Open Science Lab and works in two areas of NFDI for culture with a focus on Wikibase. She is also designated Wikibase a community manager for NFDI for culture. Um, third, we have Harald Sack who is a professor for information service engineering at FITS Karlsruhe and Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And he's also the co-spokesperson for the NFDI for culture task area overarching technical, ethical and legal activities. Paul Duchenne is a researcher and developer at TEB's uh, Open Science Lab, and he also works across two areas of NFDI for culture with a focus on Wikibase development. Um, what is the purpose of today's talk? After a short introduction, the speakers of NFDI for culture will share use cases and give us insights on how they are using Wikibase to enrich non-textual cultural data with semantic annotations. After that, um, there will be an outlook for the culture knowledge graph development and the possibilities that knowledge graphs offer for research data management. And I'm very much looking forward and hand over um, to our first speaker. Um, yeah, I think I will start and um, I will not talk a lot, just, just really um, give a brief intro. And maybe we can put on the first slide already. I don't know, Lozana or Paul. Yeah, Paul will do it. So I'm just, I'm very happy that we from the For Culture Consortium can participate in this Infra Talk series um, now for the second time already. And I assume you all, or you should already know the main outlines of our consortium. So um, for days, it is all about Wikibase and knowledge graphs. And we had said Wikibase as a central tool already when we applied for funding. Um, so why did we do that? We see Wikibase as a sustainable and a solid open source product for linked open data. And now it's not only for our consortium. So over the last few months, we have noticed there is some kind of increasing interest in Wikibase across the entire NFDI. So today we want to clear up some of those questions you probably still might have. And it's not me, it's mostly my colleagues. So as a co-spokesperson for the consortium, at this point, I'm already done. <laughs> and I would like to hand over to my two colleagues who are involved in Focaccia, really in a senior capacity and do a great job. And both have been active in the Wikibase community for years. And it's yeah, Lozana Rosanova and Paul Dichet. And I think Lozana will start now. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, Ina. And uh, yeah, Paul, if you don't mind, we can maybe go over to the next slides. So uh, yeah, Ina already introduced uh, NFDI for Culture, so I think we can even skip that one. And we can get straight to the um, slide that talks about our task area, capture and enrichment. And here, um, today we want to share how we are developing a very specific tool uh, to help with semantic annotations for non-textual media specifically looking at 3D models and 3D reconstructions. And for this particular product, we're combining a Wikibase instance for linked open data management with the compact viewer for 3D image presentation and annotation. And we're also using uh, one other open source tool, OpenRefine. But first, uh, we'll start with explaining a little bit more about what is Wikibase and why we think it's really useful for 
um, linked open data in the cultural context. So Paul, I hand over to you at this point. Okay, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, there's some nods there. Uh, so I was just going to talk briefly about Wikibase. Uh, so Wikibase is a free open source uh, software tool. Well, well, to be more exact, not actually a specific tool, but an umbrella of services um, as we've defined here. Uh, so there's several different tools available to users kind of out of the box for a range of kind of linked open data related um, tasks. And the main kind of benefits to this system are that it really lowers the barrier of entry for, um, for linked open data and for uh, interacting. So we were gonna briefly take you through our kind of um, instance, which uh, is set up here. So if you can all see this, okay. So um, also just to briefly kind of, uh, for those of you who are maybe, maybe you're familiar with uh, Wikibase predominantly through Wikidata, which is the most prominent use case for this uh, software. But um, let's just have a look through uh, this page and kind of describe um, uh, some of the different uh, example entities that we have um, here. Just give me one second. Um, so I'm just gonna show you an example of an entity that we have loaded here. This is for an individual uh, here. So one of the most attractive things about Wikibase is the ability to actually deal with uh, these statements directly. And so you can actually edit um, and contribute uh, triples. So this is a property from the data model and we can add in, um, we can add in a statement here. Uh, another th another feature that's quite useful with this system is the fact that actually to the ability to see um, edit histories. So here we can actually see the history of um, edits that have been made, and um, this provides some sort of redundancy and kind of rolling back. Uh, and um, I might just stand over to Lazana to maybe take to describe Wikibase a bit further. Um, and yeah, thank you for your time. Okay, sure. Thanks, Paul. I guess uh, I will share my screen now. And I will just go through. So yeah, just to kind of like recap a little bit why we think these umbrella of services are really important for culture. They do provide us a graphical user interface for both collaboration and version control features, um, as well as editability to the triple store, just like Paul just demonstrated literally on an individual triple statement level with possibility to add references and provenance to every single statement, which is super important for cultural data. And of course we have like uh, other benefits like Sparkle Endpoint, API for programmatic access and um, the ability to work with a range of established script libraries and other user-friendly tools. Now in the um, MVP we're developing in Task Area 1, we're combining Wikibase with this uh, tool for presentation compact. And where we see here the possibility for Wikibase to really um, extend the way we work with the presentation tool like compact is to add um, semantic capabilities to it. So compact is fantastic for collaboration and annotation of 3D models, but it's completely flat. It lacks a proper backend infrastructure. And we're adding Wikibase in there in order to manage data from multiple sources to reduce the redundancy of that data. So instead of um, our art historical uh, partners in this case study who have several different databases to manage their media files, their 3D models, their long form art historical data, we are able to uh, take that data, um, process it through uh, Wikibase and essentially reduce redundancies we can also connect to external linked open data sources such as Wikidata. And of course, we hope in the future with the four culture knowledge graph, which we'll hear more about uh, in a moment when Carol speaks. 
Now, how is this all looking? Just to kind of make things a little bit more tangible. For example, here we're working with the uh, Corpus del Baroque and Deccan Malerai data set, and we have these beautiful 3D um, models and scans from the Vikersheim castle. In Compact, we can interact with these models and we can annotate them to uh, a great precision level, while pinpointing exact X, Y, Z coordinates on the models, adding things like long form natural language text, media, as well as semantic concepts. And on the right here, all the data that we're pulling is actually coming from a wiki based instance, which allows us to have more uh, extended relations across the data and create little uh, kind of hierarchical displays of you know, the real world object structure. I won't go into the detail of all of this because it's not directly related to Wikibase and the topic today, but I did want to showcase how the MVP architecture looks on a very uh, abstract level and how working with Wikibase allows us to work in an agile way. So we're really focused on user needs and we can focus on all the different uh, aspects of a user workflow, such as data cleaning and upload through open source tools that are already made to work out of the box with Wikibase. For metadata storage and indexing, of course, we're using Wikibase here. And as uh, Paul explained, it's not really just a single thing. It kind of uh, comes as an umbrella of different tools. And lastly, we have uh, Compact for the presentation and annotation um, workflow. And for example, if we look at the storage layer, um, everything is very modular. So we could, uh, depending on specific needs, take certain uh, elements in and out and replace something like the triple store or the particular database we're using for compact or where we're storing uh, external large files like point clouds and mesh files for the 3D models. And all of that uh, is being developed openly. We have an uh, open GitLab instance. Um, I will share the slides and the links in the chat in a moment. So that is all accessible and we definitely uh, welcome any kind of feedback requirements um, that they can be entered directly into our GitLab instance. Now, before I uh, com complete uh, our part of the slides and hand over to Harold, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about community aspects and why we think Wikibase is a really useful uh, tool, not only because it uh, lowers the barrier for user interaction and it's very flexible and we can connect it to other tools, but because it is a very sustainable growing ecosystem and how that uh, works out in numbers is as following. So we have received official data from Wikimedia Germany that at the moment there are 63 ongoing research projects across different institutions uh, worldwide and 10 pre-pilot projects in a less official capacity. So Wikibase in the wild, there's at least 148 individual user accounts and 510 instances on uh, WB stack, which is Wikimedia Germany's test cloud infrastructure. It's, a, it's an infrastructure where um, individual users can launch Wikibases for a variety of reasons. So we don't, uh, we cannot confirm that indeed all of these 500 instances are used for research, but we can assume at least uh, a, a large number of them are. Furthermore, within Wikimedia Germany, there is currently 14 full-time staff uh, members working uh, specifically on Wikibase. Uh, that is distinct from the team dedicated to Wikidata. And in the uh, larger community um, beyond that, there is 182 contributors on the official GitHub repository for Wikibase. Furthermore, growing a decentralized Wikibase ecosystem across different institutions and research projects is actually the official Wikimedia movement strategy for the next decade. So thanks to that strategy, we have seen great collaboration and willingness to engage in collaboration from Wikimedia Germany. I also wanted to briefly talk about the Wikibase stakeholder group, which we are active members of. This group uh, started um, in kind of late 2020. I was involved with this group from the beginning before I even joined NFDI for Culture. And in this group, we are um, actively collaborating in the development, planning, and growth of the group with so far 17 institutional members across Europe and North America and many more individual researchers uh, as members as well. The the point of this group is to work on growing the developer capacity in the ecosystem around Wikibase, to commission and develop new Wikibase extensions, and to build sustainable um, new funding models for the open source software development, which we see as also really, really important work because we don't want to only produce software that in theory is open, but in reality is very hard to maintain and um, can very easily go obsolete. 
So uh, to finish off, uh, I wanted to mention how we are planning extensions uh, of Wikibase in the future. So far, we've talked uh, about some of the benefits of the software, but really, of course, as every piece uh, of software, it's not perfect. There's many things that can be developed further. And one of the things we are doing is collaborating with other NFDI consortia, particularly in the context of the section on metadata and the working group semantic interoperability. This working group is focused on terminology services, ontology mappings and harmonization, and various use cases for knowledge graph deployment more generally. In this context, we are proposing several different kinds of developments, uh, such as, for example, terminology services that will do with uh, access and curation for ontologies and vocabularies, also application profiles, which will perform ontology harmonization via access to the set terminology services, and lastly, from TIP's side, one of the things that we are particularly interested in is um, proposing corresponding extensions towards Wikibase so that standard and harmonized ontologies and vocabularies can indeed be used directly in a more user-friendly um, and uh, already popular tool framework. And so with that, we see a lot of potential for future cooperation with the upcoming Base Services Consortium. And I would like to say thank you and hand over to uh, Harald Zak. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much, Lozana. So I will continue now with sharing my screen. So can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. So let's start. So after this first, let's say, advertisement talk of Wikibase, you probably will keep me in mind or remember me as the devil's advocate in that sense. However, I want to talk about the possibilities and challenges of knowledge graphs for research data management in the NFDIs, especially for NFDI for culture, but also with other NFDIs. Okay, um, first to give you an overview uh, where I'm from. So I'm from Fitz Karlsruhe, that's the Leibniz uh, Institute of uh, Information Infrastructure. And as you see here on that slide, we are involved in lots of projects that involve knowledge graphs. So on the left side, you see all of the projects in different domains, so ranging from cultural heritage over natural sciences, engineering, up to archives and uh, libraries. And on the right side, you see our engagement within uh, the NFDI. So it's not only NFDI for culture, it's of course also a few other NFDI. So I'm also co-spokesperson for NFDI for MATWORK. So this is material sciences, engineering, and MARDI, which is mathematics, NFDI for data science and AI, and for the next round, we soon will know about the results there, whether these consortia will be accepted or not. So there are a few others where we have also applied and in some of them, we will also try to engage and do research data management based on or with the help of knowledge graphs. Okay, so let's start in a cultural heritage environment. Some of you who have some knowledge of Greek mythology might know that image here in the background. So this is Oedipus, uh, he sits in front of the Sphinx and the Sphinx later on, we will come back to that, will ask questions to Oedipus. So they are life-threatening these questions if they are not answered correctly. So please keep this in mind. However, all of the NFDIs, of course, they promise to do fair, uh, data management with data resources and services that they offer. And NFDI for Culture in particular is a huge data integration effort. This is because um, we try to bring together here more than 70 partner institutions who all provide data resources and data services that have to be connected. Of course, with the goal that, with the goal that um, in the end, we are able to do data integration there, of course, with low effort if possible. and Based on that, we want to provide unified access to the data and probably also enable semantic and exploratory search as well as things like intelligent recommendations of these data services and question answering and stuff like that. And this in the end might be or will be enabled based on top of the so-called NFDI for culture knowledge graph, which also keep this in mind, it's in parentheses here, is based on ontologies. Okay, let's come back to our riddle. So the things might ask you, what is 42? This is of course a piece of data, but what does it mean? 
probably you have heard one of my talks already. So this is one of the common problems I'm asking. So 42 can stand for many different things. So it could be a quantity, it could talk about 42 different things, for example. It could also talk about a point in time, the year 42 BC or AD or whatever. It could be a time span, 42 days, 42 hours, 42 seconds. It could be a length, meters, centimeters, light years. It could be a weight. It could be any kind of a measurement as you see here, as well as it could be simply a code, you know, a code for a character string, for example. So in particular, we don't know. If it's only 42, this data is raw, it's more or less meaningless because we have no idea what it means and how we should relate it to other kind of data here. So one thing it could mean, for example, it could be that we mean by 42, the 42 illustrations from Alice in Wonderland, or we could mean, as you might have guessed on first hand, this is the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, to make another cultural heritage uh, reference here. It can also be that it's uh, that I'm talking about molybdenum, because some of you might know that this has the atomic number of 42, or it might be that I'm talking about the Orion Nebula, which is the object number 42 in the famous Messier catalog. So the astronomers, uh, the astronomers among you might have already realized that. So this means we must have some ways or means to express the meaning, the semantics of the stuff somehow. So we need formal semantics to represent the meaning of the data. Now the question is, where does this semantic, semantics come from? Traditionally, in software engineering, knowledge engineering, you have two ways to do that. The traditional way, you go for software to put your semantics in there. So this means you have your data on the one hand side and you have your software on the other hand side. This means a programmer knows the data and according to how the programmer interprets the data, he or she then is coding the software according to the meaning and the meaning of course of the data then is put into the program. Of course, this depends on the individual understanding and interpretation of the programmer. Moreover, as soon as I change something in the data or the meaning of the data changes, of course, I have to change completely all software that is dealing with the data. So software maintenance becomes more extensive. And of course, it's error prone because it's dependent on the understanding and interpretation of the single program and not of the data provider. The data provider might have something completely different in mind when, of course, uh, providing that kind of data. Now, in the semantic web scenarios, so the semantic web is around now almost two decades, there the semantics is expressed or represented explicitly together with the data. So the semantics is in the data, it's written by the data provider, and it depends only on the original understanding and interpretation of the data provider, which of course brings you several benefits, like for example, less software maintenance, since if I'm changing the meaning of the data, then of course I also change the formal representation of the semantics there. And the software usually doesn't have to be changed. So it's less error prone. We have simpler means of data integration and it's also simpler to reuse this kind of data if the meaning is expressed explicitly with the help of so-called ontologies, which are formal knowledge representations. So how might now, a knowledge representation like that looks like. So you have your data. The data is complemented by formal knowledge representation, so-called ontologies. I spare you here, this is an executive talk, so I don't go into details like description logics and stuff like that. You put data together with ontologies and what you come up with then is instances of that data plus these ontologies. So you have a knowledge graph in the end, which might look like something like that. So here, for example, if we start here on the left-hand side, we have Alice at one just in Wonderland. And you see here that the creator or the author is Lewis Carroll. This thing is a book. So you have here classes, for example, you might find out that this has been published in 1865. It has 42 illustrations. Again, here is our 42. And there is a chapter which is called a mad tea party, which has an illustration exactly that contains Alice, the March Hare, the Hatter, and the Dormouse. And you might find also out that these uh, illustrations have been created by Sir Chantaniel, who also is then a contributor in that book. And the nice thing, if you contribute formal semantics with that, you might also find out or can deduce automatically that if Lewis Carroll is the author or creator of that book, 
Then he's also the creator of that part of the book, which is here exactly this chapter, the Matt T part. So you can do these kind of deductions and inferences in an automated way without explicitly stating it. So this is the nice thing about having um, explicit semantics in your data. Coming back to the NFDI for culture knowledge graph. So we already started, of course, implementing it. And what is in there besides, of course, um, all of the metadata that we are going to manage here, of course, it's a reference and an index for all of the NFDI for culture project resources in terms of data resources, data services, persons, institutions, and what kind of expertises we can count on there and find there. In the end, it should be a hub for all of the data resources that enables a federated access because the data itself is there in a distributed way. We want to engage here with federated access. If possible, I mean, in a perfect world, then all of these data resources would also be available as linked open data with the help of Sparkle endpoints. So this is an ideal world. Of course, we are far from that. And we could also connect and federate this data then with further NFDI domains or with other NFDI consortia. Within NFDI for culture, you already might know that. So the domains architecture, art history, musicology, performing arts, and media studies are represented. So what do we have now in that cultural knowledge graph? First of all, all of this data I was talking about was already, or part of it was already collected when we wrote the proposal. So we sent out huge questionnaires simply asking all of the participants, so what's out there? What kind of data do you have? What kind of services do you offer? Who are the responsible persons? What are the addresses to access there? And so on and so on. So we collected that and out of that, um, we developed then in the first year, the so-called NFDI culture ontology, which is an ontology describing all of these resources I was talking about here. And we mapped that to 24 already existing external vocabularies that of course we have here shared meaning and links and stuff that we need. So you can access the stuff here. We have it on a GitHub resource and also at NFDI for culture available. And based on that, of course, we also have uh, the first data put in there and made available on a Sparkle endpoint where you can make interesting queries like for example you could look at all of the contributions provided by art museums and since we did not ask for art museums simply by the mapping from the art museum to wikidata so this is a federated query with wikidata you can find out which of the resources are connected with art museums here so this is something nice you can already do here at our sparkle endpoint what's the technological framework in the background of course in the first half of the talk, you have heard Wikibase. So why that? Simply because you know it's a kind of standard graphical user interface that allows for interactive collaborative editing of this kind of structured data. And it's rather convenient also to engage your community exactly with that nice tool. It's an established tool, it's a well-established tool, and it connects to a semantic data store. So there is a triple store in the background that, as you have already heard, you can do Sparkle queries there. It's a wiki in the first hand side, which means, of course, you are responsible for the content and you can provide content and you can change the content. However, it's kind of static. You have always this kind of interface where you see, you know, it's rather general. So you don't have, let's say, um, adapted and uh, rather uh, custom made templates for, let's say, that for persons, you have another template as for organizations, as for data sources and stuff like that. This doesn't exist there. You always have this same kind of interface that you are using. In the background there, Wikibase is a wiki system, so it's uh, based around MediaWiki, and with that you have the MariaDB and Elasticsearch for accessing that. And um, this was the beginning actually of Wikibase, and later on they decided, okay, we could make it semantic and simply add a triple store on the site, so they added BlazeGraph as an RD app store, which is more or less synchronized then with the MariaDB, which is the core. So this um, database is the core of that wiki system. Now let's have a look at the semantics in Blaze Graph. And there we go for the very first Wikibase problem, which means, yeah, it's of course, Wikibase is not an original, uh, let's say native RDF triple store. It's a wiki and no native triple store. The triple store is there, but the data is simply copied from the MariaDB, which is a relational database. So the data is relational. 
Um, and in the attached triple store, what you see there, these are flat files, which means you don't have a semantics because they don't connect to W3C standard semantic web vocabularies. Of course, you are using RDF, but you are not really using RDFS and OWL for defining classes, for defining properties, for defining property constraints, for de defining constraint classes and all the stuff that you can do with the help of semantics. So you have only here another serialization format and the semantics, again, if you are using it, must more or less be in your program that is accessing your Wikibase or you can also do this with the largest instance of Wikibase with Wikidata. So you have no formal semantics there. However, one can deal with it, but this is kind of a Sisyphus task. So there are viable workarounds. We have tested out several of them also in the first year uh, of, of uh, our consortium. And you can do this, for example, with avoiding a program to do that. You can use a so-called declarative semantic mapping. You define mappings also based on triplets where you map then specific properties in Wikibase to their uh, referring uh, semantic enabled uh, vocabularies that are defined according to W3C semantic standards. So this is possible, but this is a lot of work and um, you cannot simply implement this in a simple way in Wikibase since you do not have a synchronous or a, let's say a bi-directional synchronization between the triple store you have there and the MariaDB. So this is kind of a bottleneck that is unsolved, but the problem we have put it forward also in the Wikibase stakeholder group. It's also something we talk about uh, with uh, the Wikimedia Foundation and the people there. And it's a huge problem. And we are thinking about solutions because this would of course increase the value of Wikibase as well as of uh, Wikidata enormously. However, what we want to give out uh, to people later on are of course guidelines and best practices, how we can enable and, um, our community here to share their data resources within a federated NFDI for culture knowledge graph. And they of course are using and can use Wikibase for the tasks you have already seen. And we want to collect this and bring this together then in a, let's say quotes, real knowledge graph and how to do that. We are currently developing the according guidelines and best practices. Another problem that we also had to address was um, the user interface. So I have already talked about, so the user interface is standard, so it's not custom made. So you cannot customize it for specific types you want to, you want to fill in there. Also, if you create a new entity, what you see there is an empty mask. You do not see all of the properties that might or should be filled out for a specific for a specific entity you create here and this is of course what users want to know what what they want to have if they are not familiar with this way of defining rdf triples within wikidata for example so this is something a problem that had to be addressed so we don't have or we have no flexible graphical user interface here what we did in NFDI for culture to do that, we were looking also for alternative solutions here. And since it was too complicated to, let's say, do surgery at the open heart of Wikibase, we simply tried to go for a rather lightweight solution using any other kind of um, CMS of content management system. And uh, the people who are maintaining our website, they are using here Typo3. And we connect the typo three simply to an arbitrary triple store. Therefore, we have not decided which one is the best to use. You can use anything you want to do there. And there, of course, we made a bi-directional connection that you can enter, for example, uh, persons, that you can enter organizations, that you can enter new data sets um, directly via the web portal. And this then will be synchronized with uh, the triple store in the background. And then the triple store is open for any kind of Sparkle queries, for any kind of visualization effort, and also for uh, data quality assurance measures, for example, based on so-called shackle constraints. You can try it out. So this is uh, at NFDI for culture.de. Of course, it's not open for the public so far. So it's you cannot enter a new persons there, but you soon will be able to do that. If Thorsten Schrade is among the audience, he might say something about that because he and his group, they are responsible for the NFDI for culture web portal. But this is the way how we are currently working on that, trying to connect the entire 
data resources around there under a uniform access here via the NFDI for culture knowledge graph portal. So what are my take home mes messages for you? If you're using knowledge graphs, of course, knowledge graphs are or should better be based on ontologies, then they are really useful. Ontologies, formal semantics, they can enhance your data management efficiency. You have seen that in the beginning. Wikibase, unfortunately, does not so far provide formal semantics, and it's not always the best fit for research data management. And we already have the NFDI for culture ontology and the NFDI for culture knowledge graph, which also is useful for other NFDIs since what we are representing there, of course, it's cultural heritage data, but um, what we are currently doing, for example, in NFDI Matwerk, uh, we are also using this ontology and adapting it for the material science domain to be able to represent there also persons, organizations, data services, data resources, and stuff like that. And uh, also in Mardi, we are thinking about using exactly this kind of ontology and resources we have already developed. Okay, um, last thing to say, thank you very much, of course, for your attention. And we are currently looking for two more senior researchers and postdocs for NFDI for data science and Mardi. So if you know somebody, please tell them to apply with us. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much um, to all the speakers. Um, this has been a really interesting talk with a lot of insights and um, some questions and uh, answers already started in the chat. Um, are there more questions or contributions? I think it was really hands-on uh, talk, like a good combination of uh, insights and, and how it is applied. Um, at NFDI for culture. So any questions? Any discussion contributions? Jörg? Yeah, thanks to all of you for your presentations. And of course, I have always some questions with respect to semantics and uh, Wikipedia and Wikidata. So maybe here's, here's one icebreaker question for the start. Um, now, given that this is a really cool resource for many purposes, um, and we are talking here now about opening up this, data, let's call it data set or knowledge base, uh, also more and more for research purposes. Uh, what would you see would be the first thing that we have to to, to discuss when it comes to how much um, yeah how much can we reuse and use Wikidata for research purposes? So what is really the the first step towards um, establishing this pipeline of adding more and more knowledge pieces coming from different research communities from different uh, NFDI consortia? Who wants to uh, answer? Who wants to answer the question? I mean, Wikidata is just perfect for contextualization, any um, item on an object level, and specifically for us in culture, it is uh, it is great to have so much information out there. We can easily link to, and also, um, yeah, we've saw um, we, we didn't um, show so much much inside our wiki base um, but we can do this maybe right now or, um, but also yeah Harald showed us some links to to wiki data so this is one answer or one one aspect when uh, wiki data comes in for us and yeah as in maybe one aspect as well um, many researchers are used to Wikidata or no Wikidata already. And as we said, this Wikibase lowers the learning curve in general for linked open data. So it's kind of the same interface and everything. So this is also kind of um, helpful here. But OK, this is just some first parts of the, the answer of the question. Maybe someone else want to take over. Yeah, I might compliment uh, to that. So Wikidata, of course, in research is used as, as a reference. So this is this is one of the, the main things. Um, 
besides other reference vocabulary slash uh, knowledge bases, like for example, the GND. So if you go for norm data and stuff like that. So in that sense, Wikidata is already used uh, for, for many things. Um, the other thing is, of course, um, it's a bit difficult to make use of Wikidata for uh, knowledge extraction and knowledge exploration tasks, since you even don't have a, a let's say, a, a valid class system there and uh, subclass relationships are sometimes rather circular and you have, I don't know how many classes you have there, I guess around 1.5 million classes that are an interesting, uh, uh, um, not really structured, uh, how should I say? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a mess sometimes, but it's good that it's there, but um, it would be nice to, to clean up the stuff somehow, but there we also have the problem again, cleaning up Wikidata with automated means is difficult because we have the, the community there and there are many different opinions about how this data should be used, what's the purpose of that and how it should be complemented in the end. So we, there is always, and um, you know, within these discussions in the, in the Wikimedia community or Wikidata community, there are tools like robots that could provide lots of data. And, but first of all, it must be decided, is it really worthwhile to put this data there? So you have a use case and, and who, is, uh, pro, uh, uh, you know, who, who is benefiting from the stuff and is this really reasonable to, to include all the stuff there? It's a, of course some curation, let's say, um, a discipline that, that has already evolved there which is good, but of course, it's not necessarily uh, the same kind of uh, curation methodology like we have or had already for, for um, let's say, authoritative resources that we are maintaining now for, for, for many years. And um, so the point here is that the intentions of the users are different. So not all users of Wikidata are researchers and scientists. And as such, we have, of course, rather particular needs there. And we try to, to, to voice our, uh, let's say, our demands now also in the Wikibase stakeholder group and to, to get this uh, across and, and to benefit more from, from Wikidata. Okay. You think that this huge modeling endeavor really can you know, um, can be efficient in a way that uh, we achieve to model the right uh, properties, for example, um, and then to, to translate it into different languages. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes, as we all know, we have different viewpoints and we like to call things differently. And this is some, to a certain degree, this is what we need to come up with, an efficient process to achieve a consensus about the meaning. And Wikidata is just such a huge, big chunk of knowledge. And sometimes there are, there's a, a little bit of mess, to be honest, at some, at some points. Uh, others are, other areas are much better organized and you could also say cleaner. Uh, then there's not always this, this just one view, but there's this multiple views. How do you think that research, which usually needs to be, not usually, which needs to be precise, which needs to be to the point, how does that fit together well? May I? Okay, of course. So, <laughs> yeah, you name it. So this is one of the one of the things that are really crucial here. But um, also in research, there is not no such not not always uh, and everywhere this thing as a it's a, let's say a universal truth. So in the humanities, for example, many things can be true. This is according to your viewpoint. So therefore, exactly this aspect of, of uh, Wikidata is, a, is rather beneficial. If you want to make clear, you know, um, connect your viewpoint or your statements with a specific prominence information and a specific context that people can really then in the end uh, decide on their own whether they want to take this into account, whether they want to trust it or not. So this is, this is really important thing there. On the other hand, if it comes to, uh, let's say, modeling the world, we have exactly the same problem. Since each of us have a different viewpoint, uh, um, a combined modeling effort, effort, bringing so many individuals with different kind of, you know, 
thinking how the world is structured together and to come up with a thing where everyone can agree with is really a rather, rather difficult uh, effort. You, you see this everywhere in each kind of standardization effort and standardization usually takes place in smaller fractions of the world here. Um, this is a thing which requires years of, uh, you know, effort uh, from, from all of the participants. And then uh, you create something which is not necessarily, let's say, uh, viable and valid for all potential uh, viewpoints again. So probably we will need also a scientific wiki data and not only one, we will need several for different disciplines probably. Thank you for the answer. Uh, we have a question from YouTube um, from a participant who is uh, watching us uh, live on YouTube. What does uh, Wikibase afford uh, differently than DBpedia does? Yeah, this is quite simple to answer. Uh, DBpedia is, um, let's say, an automatically extracted uh, knowledge representation or knowledge graph from Wikipedia. And there uh, almost only so-called Wikipedia info boxes are extracted. These are these small boxes that you see usually on the left side of the article. So persons have this kind of a small box with structured data in it, and this is extracted in an automated way. And the only way to interact with uh, DBpedia data is uh, you have to change Wikipedia and then probably with the next extract, this change then will be represented in DBpedia. So DBpedia is the semantic version of Wikipedia. It's a small fraction of the knowledge that is in there created from structured knowledge. And uh, you have no direct, let's say, uh, editing capability there. You have to do it indirectly via Wikipedia. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Michael Diepenbrock uh, has a question or comment. Yeah, Harald, um, you might have mentioned that. Uh, it might be um, that uh, you will need a certain kind of governance over all these uh, wiki uh, data instances in order to yeah, at least keep some of the data static where you think intellectual property rights uh, might be um, yeah, in danger or things like that, you know. Um, is there an answer to that? There are many answers, I guess, or <laughs> I'm afraid, <laughs> sir. And, and not only one single one, sir. Yes, we need some kind of a government a governance. And uh, again, the problem is all have to agree with that. And uh, we have to make sure that uh, with this kind of government governance, um, we are still able to, uh, to, to make, let's say, to, that, that people still benefit from it and that it's not simply an obstacle providing you know, further change within what, what already is established. This is really, really difficult and I can't give you a definite answer and that especially I can't tell you how to do that. Um, I mean, we have seen already now from the experiences that for example, Wikidata or in general, the Wikimedia efforts have with these huge um, community efforts. So they try to establish something based on the community. And of course, not everybody is happy with how this really works now. And uh, from both sides, some people think it's much too restrictive and I can't get the things I want to have in there. I can't get them in and other people think, yeah, we should be much more restrictive <laughs> to find you know, the right balance there. This is really, really difficult. Um, okay. Also, issues of uh, citability. You know, so, um, uh, data publications have become quite familiar over the years, and uh, so references to to data is uh, something very yeah, usual by now. And um, in order to <laughs> data being citable, you also need to ensure that they are static, or at least you can you know, come up, you know, with uh, those that version that has been referenced at a certain time. And so I think there are some issues around all this. Yeah? Definitely, yes. So especially then long, longer, let's not call it really long-term preservation, but longer term preservation that you also, let's say in a few years uh, with the same URI access, the same kind of data or data set, this yeah. definitely has to, be, has to be provided and has to be taken care of. Um, for Wikidata, I mean, things have been rather, 
let's say static now for for quite a while since it was established things haven't changed so q42 is still uh, douglas adams so we can be sure about that and i guess it will also be that way the only thing that happened for example with wikidata is that you might find the same thing several times and people don't realize it so the things will be there with different identifiers and this is so data quality and assurance that you remove ambiguities and redundancies is also a huge effort there and then i have a last question about uh, the technical setup you said maria de bay is, uh, is the backbone there and um, you showed also that there is an elastic index on top of that that's mm -hmm. what you need what you use for uh, searching them um, so to make that a little bit faster when using yeah, RDF <laughs> Sparkle. Yeah, so this is the, the typical, um, let's say, solution for information systems that are, let's say, uh, that, that have a critical mass on users and uh, lots of queries that are coming in. You can't usually do this based simply on a, on a Sparkle server yeah. that creates complicated queries. You, you pre-process the stuff right in front offline and what you do is you complement your usual search index with semantic information so that you also then can do in a limited way semantic searches based on a traditional search index mm -hmm. okay thanks okay thank you um there was one question i would also um present to you uh, which was written down in the chat section uh, it's more like a look into the future uh, what would one do to use an ontology like cdoc uh, crm with wiki based now or in one or two years maybe i can um, give a quick answer here because i'm uh the one following the latest developments in the community. And this is like the million dollar question. Everyone is always asking, when are we going to get the ability to just import uh, standard ontologies into Wikibase? I can say that the stakeholder group is working on this. Uh, we have several plans slash projects to develop extensions that will enable ontologies to be used more meaningfully as Harold was saying earlier with like more formal semantics. So I, I would say definitely in like one or two years, uh, we should be seeing something. There's already two projects that have done uh, standardization through brute force, I would say, through just basically writing scripts and um, modifying the triple store and then modifying the method to export the data. Uh, one of the better known ones is the Luxembourg Authority project. Um, they did a presentation in December in one of the uh, library linked open data conferences. I have to, I'll double check the exact um, conference and the link to the presentation, but that is the latest information. And um, it's a little, I, as far as I know, it's proprietary, like they haven't released all of the code open source, but they are using Wikibase and they're using CDOC CRM compliant RDF in their Wikibase instance. Hopefully they will release it open source soon. So we'll be able to see exactly what they're doing. Um, but in general, I think this is something everyone is, you know, working towards um, and hopefully we'll have it pretty soon. If it's okay, I would like to go back to York's question earlier around um, Wikidata and kind of research use. And I just want to say uh, a few words there, but I don't know if we have time. Is that okay? Or just to kind of reiterate why um, Wiki data itself is probably not really perfect as a research environment, but I think it's a really good um, showcase of, you know, growth and how easily people uh, kind of started using it and, and really experimenting to use it even for research, uh, especially in the data sciences. And um, from what I have seen, digital preservation and computer science have had huge communities and kind of very large efforts uh, to use Wikidata as it is, even though it's very limited. And there have been projects like WikiDigipress from Yale University Libraries, which developed a separate interface uh, as a portal on top of Wikidata, right, to clean the data. They spend a huge amount of time investing in one of their postdocs, spending time in the community, changing the data model for how software is described in Wikidata. And I, I personally think the software community around Wikidata has done a very good job in, in like improving classes structure and um, generally how uh, software objects are described and then 
the DigiPress uh, portal essentially provides an interface through which uh, specialists in digital preservation can see what is missing in the data, in Wikidata, and fill it in through a kind of constraints-based, uh, very nice visual interface. So it's definitely possible to do these efforts. It does take time. You have to kind of be embedded in the community to make, uh, make things uh, kind of different. But I think that's a use case for why Wikibase could also work of course, with a lot of work, right, and extending it to towards a more uh, formal semantic structure and towards uh, formal ontologies. But the kind of ease with which you can uh, use Wikibase directly or develop additional interfaces on top of it as evidence through case studies in Wikidata, I think is just to showcase that uh, we can and should be using it, I think, for specific cases. Of course, it's not always the right tool. Sometimes, you know, you don't need a hammer uh, if you want to, like, I don't know, cut something. but um, I think it's definitely, it has potential and with the stakeholder group, we want to keep improving it. And it's very, uh, it's very, very valuable, all of these kinds of events to get feedback from people like what is needed, you know, as we're seeing here, okay, CDOC CRM, maybe making it easier to search through the version control system, everything like this is really helpful to us to keep improving. Thank you. I will stop my uh, <laughs> marketing speech now. I mean, I always feel like I'm an advocate. I don't, I hope it's not marketing. I, I try to advocate for the software because I do think it's valuable um, in the long term. Thanks. Thank you for your uh, for your long answer, not only like the sh uh, short answer in the chat. Um, I think this was very well uh, worthful. And uh, are there any more comments or questions? I don't see any. Ah, okay. God, Vilius has a question or comment. Is there a way that one can contribute to your Wikibase instance, even if one is not from your consortium? Well, I guess if it's the question around the knowledge graph, that is not Wikibase, and that's a question to Harold. So I, I suppose it's yes, yes, it's possible to. Uh, uh, collaborate and contribute there. When it comes to the Wikibase that we're using in task area one, that is closed uh, in terms of data for now because it's our demo instance. But in theory, when uh, we're working with uh, users, we could be more open, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And I mean, we just have now this one instance of Wikibase and Paul already set up several else. So some more, and we have a lot of uh, other use cases and data lined up already. So I think there might be other options as well to contribute there. So very much looking forward there. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. The spirit of collaboration also exists there. Uh, Jürgen Kett. Yeah, hi. Uh, yes, it's just just a comment because I hope that we achieve in NFI to to set up kind of basic infrastructure we all uh, can share. So maybe in maybe in four or five years, I don't know how uh, how long it will take for you. Uh, we have a kind of perfect um, uh, node system that we can all set up and then contribute to that knowledge graph. So that's uh, the thing uh, I would like to see in the future. Um, so I think that's something we are also all consortia um, have in mind uh, when we talk about knowledge graphs that we need some kind of distributed infrastructure, but with shared uh, access points or, or possibilities to 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 uh, even for small projects to take part of that to provide data to share ontologies and, and uh, so I hope we have that same vision here um, um, and shared vision about that. It's just kind of comment or question. Maybe you can yeah, say something about your the future plans of the NFTI as a whole plans for, for a kind of uh, yeah, um, easy to use knowledge graph software. Okay, who wants to answer to that comment? So for future plans, probably we should ask Georg. <laughs> Uh, we do not have a centrally coordinated activity for a user-friendly user interface. And, and I think this was one of your main questions. But what we do see is that more and more consortia and more and more people are 
picking up this idea that Wikidata is a valuable resource where also scientific information can be stored. Uh, so maybe we should take this as, as an input to our planning sessions, whether this is something we would like to push forward from the NFDI. So uh, status quo, we do not yet have a planned activity for that, but we are in contact with Media, Wikimedia Foundation on, on various aspects. And maybe this is one of the additional things we want to, we want to plan for the future. Maybe just just an addition. I, I mean, uh, we we all um, have the, the same discussion with uh, Wikimedia Deutschland currently. So uh, we are already in contact, and we have signed a kind of agreement on that. So for me, it's not more. It's one thing. Aspect is definitely to have uh, easy to use user interfaces. But but what I had in mind is more a kind of. A, a perfect wiki base, let's call it that way, um, for scientific purposes or cultural purposes. So something uh, we can easily uh, install and then pro provide data to others. So like an easy to use link of link data um, software, because I think most um, institutions are not in the position to install and develop their own solutions. Um, so, I think that would be very um, helpful if NFDI would achieve this goal um, to provide such a sof software in, um, um, in, uh, in cooperation with Wikimedia Deutschland uh, as, a, as a really uh, big player in that uh, community-based um, uh, yeah, information management. Um, so that's, that's what, what I'm in mind. I, it's not about uh, simple user interfaces. I think that's something uh, what is simple is, is depending on, on the use case, so. Okay, thank you. Is there like, not, again, a comment on the comment? Does anyone answer the comment again? Okay. Maybe I, I'll just like have a final quick, uh, Quick mention there. I, I see this a lot in uh, you know all sorts of meetings we're having across NFDIs in the linked open data working groups we're having, um, and I I don't know if the answer is a single wiki base that can do everything. That might be a little bit too utopian even for me <laughs> who is a wiki base advocate. Um, but I I do think that uh, with the work that Harold is doing in Task Area Five because it connects across multiple NFDIs. If the knowledge graph can set out some best practices and standards that can then help, um, you know, the Wikibase community to make Wikibase a really compliant and uh, solid solution that can feed into the knowledge graph, um, which has its own federated search, et cetera, et cetera. I think that would be really valuable. We're also working with other um, two kind of communities within NFDI, like we have partners with the whiskey community and they're doing slightly different things. So I'm hoping that even if we don't have a kind of Swiss army knife, that's like one tool that can do it all. We definitely have best practices in like a series of tools that are easy to deploy. And you kind of have a, uh, we want to have this kind of checklist, checklist system where you tick a few boxes. Like I have this kind of data set and I want to achieve this. And yes, I definitely want to feed into the knowledge graph. And based on this checklist, then you get a recommendation. Okay, use Wikibase or no, use Whiskey or no, maybe use uh, some of the other tools that we're exploring. So yeah, that would be my uh, kind of ideal vision, but I also let others uh, add to that. I think this was also like a very nice final statement. And um, if there are like not no urgent questions uh, for now, I would uh, suggest that um, we thank again to the speakers, but also to the audience for the lively contributions. I think this was again a, a very in interesting talk about um, where, where we can also easily see how um, NFDI also creates a value for uh, for research. So 